So you may be asking, what kind of data are we collecting? Here's a close-up view of the wearable itself, and there are numerous IoT-enabled sensors identified on this diagram. I think it's helpful to talk about this, though, in terms of the four general categories or types of data that we collect. So first would be environmental conditions, things like low light levels or no light levels, uh, high temperature, uh, changes in humidity and barometric pressure. Uh, those are the kinds of things that can have an impact on fatigue of a worker or affect productivity or uh, have impact on when um, heat exhaustion may be um, on set and uh, heat protocol ought to be enacted. Uh, there are things like a microphone on the device, which acts as a full noise dosimeter. So uh, we're able to monitor sound levels in multiple octaves. Uh, since our armband is within uh, close proximity to the head, uh, we're able to calculate a time-weighted average for each employee in near real time. Uh, we've got air quality sensors on board. Uh, we're sensing volatile organic compounds, anything that give off gases. So data that is relevant about changing environmental conditions that has an impact on employee health and safety. And again, we're gathering that from on the worker and we're sending it to our cloud platform uh, and it shows up in the dashboard in about 30 to 45 seconds, so very near real time. Second category would be we're using accelerometers on the device uh, that detect motion coupled with force in three axes. And a logical starting place for us was to identify slips and trips and falls, all of which have a very different motion signature to them. So when we detect motion that is outside uh, the norm operating range, I guess, of an employee doing their job, uh, but a slip or a trip or a fall uh, with, with some force attached to it. We package up that motion signature and we send that to our machine learning database to compare it against training data uh, in other samples. Uh, and we would try to classify and categorize what kind of motion it is. Is this a no-risk motion or is this a potentially hazardous motion? Um, in the case uh, where we have training data like a slip, trip, fall, push, pull, uh, repetitive motion, we're able to return a confidence level uh, and an accuracy rating um, that looks like we're 98% sure this is a slip. Um, and it's an opportunity for the safety leader to have a conversation with the frontline worker, find out or ask what they experienced and then validate that data, which further trains our models. Um, when one of those first two occurrences happens, environmental conditions outside of the norm or forceful human motion, we then identify the location of where that indicator has been detected. And we do that via Bluetooth, we listen for a beacon signal, and then we can overlay that location on a facility floor plan map and show frequency of those types of indicators by location. And last but certainly not least, there's a button in the middle of our wearable device which allows a worker to press and intentionally hold down so that it doesn't happen by accident uh, that button. And when they do, uh, it activates an onboard voice recording um, capability. So they can speak into the device and record a voice memo of only up to 15 seconds, but it's ample time to report near misses or observations from the front lines. We hear things all the time, like I'm here in a dark corner of the warehouse and there's a stack of material that looks like it's going to be fall over, uh, needs to be restacked. We've had uh, lots of near miss reporting take place as a result of uh, deployments of Make You Safe. Uh, we're reducing the barriers sometime that exist with people not wanting to stop their work and go fill out paperwork for something that didn't really happen. And we've even had voice memos indicative of uh, process improvements that could be made uh, and quality concerns that managers and supervisors would definitely want to know about. 
So with that said, our wearable collecting data while it's out in the facility and sending that to our cloud platform, here's a quick look at the other side of our solution, which we call Make You Smart. This is our uh, cloud software platform. Uh, we are proud to have released Make You Smart 2.0, which is a redesigned interface and dashboard, which really is intended to provide a, a, an at-a-glance view of the highest priorities that safety leaders would want to see come in in real time so that they can begin to take action on them. So you can see that there are things identified, easy to distinguish, like trends that have been identified, uh, hazards uh, that are open, uh, tasks that have been created, the latest voice memos that have come in, along with indicators that have been detected by our wearable. Um, those are broken into environmental indicators and motion indicators in another spot. The software platform has far-reaching capabilities toward increasing the effectiveness and the efficiency of safety leaders uh, and uh, easing their uh, job on a day-to-day -day basis, aiding them in things that they do, tracking results and tracking return on safety expenditures. Again, this is fully responsive, so uh, floor supervisor using a smartphone can easily uh, be able to see the latest data that's coming in. So that's just a quick overview of Make You Safe technology. I hope that that was helpful. We certainly would be happy to provide a more in-depth demo. Uh, happy to answer any questions. And for more information about our pilots and the results that we were able to attain, please go to the URL, makeyousafe.com slash pilot. There's a downloadable report there for you. Thank you.